Good everybody. Everybody uh, have a seat here real quick or just fly down for a second. Good, good afternoon to everybody. I'm Dave Hardy. I'm the Secretary of Labor for Labor, Secretary of Revenue for Governor Justice. And I have here with me to my right Mark Muco, who's the Deputy Secretary of Revenue. And uh, the governor's on his way. He'll be here in just a few minutes. And my job is to sort of uh, maybe give a quick five-second overview before the governor gets here to talk about his tax plan. And let me just take you back to November 4th, the day after the election, uh, Governor Justice announced to the media and, and to us and the Department of Revenue at the Capitol that he wanted to uh, implement a plan to start uh, phasing out and ultimately eliminating West Virginia's state income tax. Well, that's a big deal. State income tax is uh, $4.6 billion a year we receive, or $2.1 billion. Our st total state budget is $4.6 billion. So it's a very big number for us. And he said, I want to do this uh, in, as fast as I can. I'd like to try to do it in three years. That's obviously a big challenge. But I also don't want to cut the state's budget. I want to keep the budget flat. The state's spending budget is about $4.68 billion. I'll we'll keep it flat. And then I don't want anybody on the lower income scales of West Virginia to get hurt by this. <laughs> if you look at, Oops. yeah, well, here's out. If you look at this, um, this census data, you will see that there are 732,000 households in West Virginia. And there are a number of those households that have income of less than 10,000, 15,000, and below. And what we had to do, we had to design a plan that for those that were in the lower income levels who weren't paying that much state income tax, we wanted to offset any extra expense they might have in paying some of these other uh, taxes like the consumer sales tax and the soft drink tax. So part of this plan was to rebate to households of $35,000 or less every three months, every quarter, a rebate on the state income tax from, from the state uh, tax department. So not only would you get, if your, your income tax is cut by 60%, but you would also have a rebate from the state tax department if your income of your household was $35,000 or less. Uh, this plan applies to wages, salaries, unemployment compensation, social security, IRAs, annuities. That's the type of income that is affected by the first year of the plan, affected in a good way, and that the income tax on those types of income will be, under the proposal, will be cut 60%. So it's a big challenge, but remember what's going to happen here if this income tax plan is passed by the legislature and signed into law by Governor Justice. There'll be one billion thirty-five million dollars in money put back into the pockets of all of us as West Virginians, and on top of that, fifty-two million more dollars back to households of thirty-five thousand or less uh, of income, household income. So fifty-two million on top of one billion thirty-five million, we can do that fifth grade math. It's one billion eighty-seven million dollars will be returned to West Virginians to spend as they please, and that's an important part of this plan. You, you will have that much more money back in your pocket to spend that money as you please. If you don't want to spend it on tobacco and soft drinks and liquor and beer, that's your prerogative. Or if you do want to spend it on those uh, on those items, that's your prerogative. And there's more to the plan than just that. It also involves, of course, changing the way we can tax uh, coal, oil, and gas. And it also involves uh, certain professional groups, such as law firms, CPA firms, being asked to be taxed to pass along the sales tax on their invoices, which they traditionally have been exempted from that. So there's a lot to this plan. It's all very important. And the governor's going to spend some time. We've been all over the state. Here comes the governor through the door. Uh, taking questions from people like you so we can understand how to make this plan better. So that's my five cent tour of the plan, but with no nothing further for me to say except on behalf of the people of West Virginia, 
Governor Jim Justice. Thank you. Thank you all much. And I hope Secretary Hardy's already got through the whole thing and we'll talk about something else. I mean, I'm just uh, let me take this off. Okay. Well, first of all, I know each and every one of you got stuff to do. You know, when it really boils right down to it, the sun's shining. It's a beautiful day in West Virginia. Beautiful day in Berkeley Springs. And you're here. And you're here for a reason. And I'm here too. And I'm here for a reason too. And the reason is just this. And I want you to just think just a second, man, because everything I tell you today, as everything I've told you, everything I'm, I'm going to do, I, I, I hold really dear to my heart the principle of telling the truth. You know, at the end of the day, absolutely, it's all we have to go on. It's everything. And so a lot of politicians believe they can tell you anything and you'd say, well, that's just politics. But that's not right. And that's not fair. Now, <clears throat> with all that, what I would tell you is just this. And this is just, I don't know how to say it other than just tell you just the truth. The state, the state in the last four years has come a long, long, long ways. And if you believe it or don't believe it, well, I really don't care. You know, at the end of the day, when I walked in the door, the books that they gave me, I'm a business guy, and our state was bankrupt. Dead, flat, bankrupt. And in the last four years, there's been a lot, a lot of good things happen. You know, we passed a Roads to Prosperity Bill and really got ourselves off and going. Now, there's probably some of you that didn't think that the Roads to Prosperity thing was a good thing. And you really thought, because people were pushing you this way, that you really thought, if it passes, they're just going to keep raising our taxes and raising our taxes. And I was even here. And I told you there's no way. And there has been no way. You haven't seen a tax increase, period, from the standpoint of when you voted for the Roads to Prosperity program. Now, with all of that, you know, what was built into that in the very beginning was those modest little things, you know, increasing gas tax and all that kind of stuff. But beyond that, the thing that you were really worried about, about additional taxes, never happened. The Roads to Prosperity thing gave us instant jobs all across our state. Now, in your area here, things just happen that they are very, very, very good and they continue to be good and that's the way we want it to continue to happen. But in a lot, a lot of places across the state of West Virginia, things were really upside down. And we've gotten better. Along the way, we really put a stake in the sand and said we're going to try to help our teachers, did we not? And in doing so, we absolutely, for our, all of our service personnel and all of our state employees, we gave them historic pay raises, boom, boom, back to back. We put $100 million plus in PEIA, and since the day that I walked in the door, all of the premiums, imagine, imagine that the premiums for health insurance for all those workers has never gone up a dime. Not one penny. Now, absolutely, it is, there is accomplishment after accomplishment for the vets, for the elderly, and well, the reason I'm going through all this is not so you'll pat me on the back, because I don't need that. I'm going through it from the standpoint of when, we, when all of a sudden a pandemic comes, we handle it and handle it just like it ought to be handled. We handled the money just like it ought to be handled. We came out of it with surplus after surplus. I mean, for God's sakes, a little. Now we're on every national broadcast all over the nation, and we have become the envy of the world. Now, in all of that, the reason I go through all that is I just go through it for just one thing. It would have been really easy 
to have gone into the state of the state and said just that and did five victory laps and done nothing else. That would have been the easiest thing in the world to have done. Now whether you believe it or not believe it, it again, it doesn't matter much. But really and truly, with the additional stimulus dollars that are coming in from the whatever administration it was, whether it was the Trump administration or the Biden administration, and all that we've got in place already, I could have just cruised right to the finish line. And in all honesty, you'd almost be an Elvis reincarnated and gone on down the road. But see, I'm not there for that. I'm really there for you. That's it. I don't want anything. I don't want a thing. I don't want a salary. I don't want a hot tip. I don't want anything. Nothing. Now, I'm telling you, with all the stuff that has happened since I've come in the door and all the stuff that's happened prior to me coming in the door, West Virginia has lost an awful lot of population. And we continue to lose population. Now, I am really just telling you the truth. It would be nice for me to sit here and say how great it's been since I was in the door, but it hasn't mattered. We still lost population. You see, I am absolutely just saying that Sure, we passed roads to prosperity. Sure, we've done this for the best. Sure, we've done this and this and that. We have. But really and truly, we still lose population. We've got to reverse that somehow. The state of West Virginia, the only state in the union, right there, the only one. The rest of this nation doubled in population. Doubled. Since 1950. In 1950, we had 2.2 million people in West Virginia. Today, you've got a million seven hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand and something. We had 2.2 million. If we'd have doubled, we'd have 4.4 million people in West Virginia. Would our businesses be better? Would our schools be better? Would everything be better? Of course it would. Now, please, you. You are in an area that goodness is happening, and I love it. And I want more goodness to come, and you be able to maintain the great style and standard of life that you have. I don't want goodness to come and it bring confusion or, or just uh, cluttering. I don't want that. But in addition to that, all across this state, we got to do something. You've got to do something. And you can say, well, let's make schools better, or let's make the roads better, or let's have more broadband, or whatever it may be. I'm telling you, we're trying to do every bit of that. And all my predecessors did that, and did that, and did that, and did that. They made, you know, our, our tax law for our businesses absolutely friendly. They passed a right to work law and they got rid of prevailing wage and we have low property taxes and do the people come or leave? They leave. They leave. We've got to do something. That's all I'm saying. Now, I want everybody to know just this. The plan we put together very aggressively gets after this. We had to do three things. But before I go into the three things, I want you to know just this. I'm not stuck in a rut on any of the things. I would welcome, welcome, absolutely adjusting this or that and everything. To be perfectly honest, you know, someone brought up the vaping, and God knows, you know, the vaping situation is probably a really big time issue with our, with our kids, and it's probably surely a health issue and all that. But at the same time, we want everyone to succeed. And it looks like what we've got, as far as the margins there, probably need to be tweaked and, and, and worked out better. The same thing with the wine. 
From the standpoint of wine, we put $4 a gallon on the wine, which amounts to 94 cents a bottle on the wine. And it doesn't really amount to much, but at the same time, it's out of kilter a little bit. And we need to adjust that. Listen, I have tried to put a little bit on soda pop, a little bit on the tearing of gas, a little bit on the tearing of coal, absolutely a little bit from the standpoint of a luxury tax on somebody that's really wealthy that's going to buy a $5,000 plus item. You know, I've tried to bring everybody under the tent, our lawyers, our accountants, all those people, and everything, and then make it all to go to go together to where every single person ended up cash positive. Now, I think that probably a great many people right here in this room just don't understand what we're dealing with. Because I'll just tell you this as honestly as I can tell you, and along the way here I'll explain more, but there was a big component of this that I didn't get either. A big component of it. Now let me just real quickly just say this. If you think about the left hand, I want to make, no matter what wage earner you are, if you have an income less than 10000 and you pay no income tax, I want you to be cash positive after you pay additional sales tax or a higher tobacco, you know, cigarette tax or whatever it may be. I want you to remain significantly cash positive. And every wage earner all the way up, that was mandatory. That we found a way to keep all of you cash positive. So in other words, if this thing were a vote, and you were the legislature, or whomever it may be, your vote, if it were a no vote, you're going to vote no that you're going to take money out of every single wage earner's pocket in the state of West Virginia, all of them. So, now we'll lay that aside as the left hand. The right hand is this, is the opportunity. The right hand is just this, is we know we're the only state in the country losing population. We know that all the other states, with the, maybe the exception of a Kansas, that this is a tremendous boom to them. We know it. We've compared ourselves to everybody coming or going from the standpoint of everything. And we know that the opportunity is enormous. Now, if you don't believe that and you believe the opportunity is just real small, the opportunity is still opportunity, no matter what. That's the right hand. Throw it away. Throw it away. Now, throw away the left hand, Money in people's pocket, throw away the opportunity on the right hand. Now, dial into what I'm saying. Think about this just for a second. If we do this plan, it's going to take, and get this, because this will blow you away. This is the part that I completely missed. It will take a billion, eighty-seven million dollars and it'll put it right back in your hands. Every single one of those homes all around you, for as far as you can see, every single household, 732,000 of them in West Virginia, 732,000 households in West Virginia will have an average of 1,483 dollars that they don't have today. What are they going to do with it? What are they going to do? They're going to spend the money. That's what they're going to do. Every store down those streets, every store will be booming with business. And if you don't think so, then you're really missing the boat. If you don't think that the dress store downtown will sell more dresses with every single person around here with $1,483, you're just missing something. Now, I can't 
I can't take you any further than that. Because at the end of the day, from my side, like I said, we could have taken the victory lap. From my side, if we don't do this, it's not going to matter to me. But honestly, have you not had a moment in your life when just maybe you believe something so passionately and then all of a sudden, just maybe, you realize, boy, man, that was wrong. It was just plain wrong. Now, I'm telling you that's your moment if you feel that way right as we speak. I know, I know that this is right. I know that there's no point in even thinking about that people are going to take that money and they're going to drive to somewhere else and spend their money. They will some. They will some. But now you just think, if every one of those houses, and not every one of them will have the same thing, because some of them will have $350, and some of them will have $3,000. But every single one of them will have an average of $1,483. Do you really think that you're all going to just get in your car and drive somewhere else and spend their money? There's no way. There is no possibility. They'll buy more pop, they'll buy more liquor right here, they'll buy more food, they'll buy more everything here. Now, do you realize this, that on that $1,483, what's the sales tax increase? What's the increase? 1.9%. 1.9% is what you're talking about. That additional 1.9% is about $25 or $26. Now, if I handed you $1,483, and you had to throw $25 or $26 in a pot here, are you going to spend your money downtown? Or are you going to drive somewhere to spend your money? I'm telling you. Honestly, if you're thinking the other way, if that dress store downtown is not going to sell more dresses, you're not thinking right. And I love you with all my soul. And absolutely, with all in me, from my standpoint, it doesn't matter. But I am telling you this, West Virginia, we know, is losing population, and we got to do something. And absolutely, if you don't think that this works, look at all these states. Look at their population growth. For God's sake to live in, you know, Tennessee just had this in place for just a very few years, and 102% growth. Florida is 600% growth. We're losing population. Our schools, if you want our schools better, if you want your roads better, if you want more broadband, you're going to have to have more people. You've got to have more people. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you this as your friend and somebody that dearly, dearly loves you. If I thought in any way that this in any way could hurt your business or hurt you, there's no way on God's earth that I would be for this in any way. No way. No way. I want nothing but goodness for you. Last thing I'll say, and then I'll answer any question that you have as best I possibly can. I said yesterday in Beckley, West Virginia, here's a prime example of what I'm talking about. In Beckley, West Virginia, yesterday I had a guy walk up to ask a question. His name was Mike. Or is Mike. He said, I run Skyline. I didn't know what Skyline was, but it's a restaurant. Now, he said, do you realize that if we do this right here with the, what you're doing to liquor, as far as the, the tax increase on liquor, and my, what we make our living on is not food, because we don't make much on food. We make it on liquor, beer, and soft drinks. And what you're doing to me is going to put me out of business. And then the next thing he said is, do you realize when I sell a shot of Jack Daniels, I'm selling it for seven bucks. And now I'm going to have to sell it for ten. He believed that. He believed that. And I said, well, hold on, Mike, hold on. So I called up our Secretary of Revenue, and he came up and said, 
Mr. Secretary, what is a fifth of Jack Daniels going to go up in price? A dollar seventy. I said, all right, Mike, how many shots are there in a fifth of liquor? Twenty-four. He said his cost is or price is going to have to go from seven to ten dollars. I said, Mike. How much of your cost going to go up on that shot of uh, Jack Daniels that you say? Three dollars. I said, Mike, do you realize what they're really going to go up? Seven cents. Seven cents. That's it. Now, if everybody around him has got $1,483, do you not think he's going to sell more liquor? Seven cents. I said, Mike, you charge them all 707. <laughs> charge them all 707. And it'll keep you right where you are. And every new customer you have, put the money in your pocket. He just didn't understand. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm right here. I'm not trying to convince you of anything in the world. Because it doesn't matter. I'm telling you. You're in a, if you're thinking negatively about this, you're in a bubble and you're about to make the god awful mistake that you've ever made, period. Period. Because there is nothing, nothing that approaches how important this is right now for West Virginia. You're in the spotlight of the world. Right now is our moment. Everybody on the outside looks at us and says, Dang, West Virginia's doing it. And right now, if we go out and say, okay, let's go, it'll make everything happen, and I'm telling you, it'll happen. I can't drag you there. I can't do it. And, uh, but I can come, and I can answer your questions. So ask me anything you choose to ask. Please do. Yes, sir. Okay, now I didn't understand Winchester, you. Winchester, Virginia is only 30 some miles south of here. Now, it is a bit of a trot to go down to Winchester, but it isn't impossible. And certainly, taxes in, West, in Virginia are lower. Gasoline taxes are much lower in Virginia. Every time I have to be in Virginia, I buy gasoline because it's cheaper in Virginia. Okay. So I will tell you that that's the geography of the Eastern Panhandle. We're between Maryland and we're between Virginia and it isn't that far to Pennsylvania border. It's only a couple miles north of Hancock, Maryland to Pennsylvania border. Okay, now, now I, I, I hear you and, and trust me, I, I want to be so open-minded, it's unbelievable about everything, okay? I really do. I want you to be the same. How's this business right here surviving right now? How this business is right out there surviving? Well, most of our business, this business, probably comes from Baltimore, uh, D.C. metropolitan area, if I were to guess. But now, but here, but, but understand what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say just this: all these businesses that are thriving in West Virginia right now, right? We're going to raise this. The, what you're focused on, the consumer sales tax. 1.9%. Now, if that's all we did and we didn't do anything else, I could hear your point and think it's valid. But if you raise the consumer sales tax 1.9% and you put in the pocket of every single person all the way around here $1,483, do you not think that these businesses are going to grow? Absolutely. The question you've got to ask yourself is, well, how on God's earth are they making it now? And if they're making it now, and we put all that money in everybody's hand, and all we do is change the, sale, the sales tax 1.9%, if you don't think that that will raise absolutely their business, you're making a mistake. Because, I mean, I love you with all my soul, but I, I, I'm a business guy. I am a heck of a business guy, and I've been in forever. But now just... 
Just hear me out on this. If you're taking a convenience store right on the border, right directly on the border, how do they make it? Well, they're a convenience store. That's what they're called that for. And literally, every item is cheaper at Walmart. Every item they got in the store. They make it there because people don't want to drive to Hancock or to Winchester or whatever, and their time is worth more to them than anything else. And if they got, and if I didn't give them any money, you're right. But if you had fourteen hundred eighty-three dollars, wouldn't you be like most of us and just say, "There's the twenty-five dollars. Who gives a hoot? I'm not driving around everywhere. I'm spending the rest of my money." No what? No dress shop. Okay. Well, okay. And I would even wonder if a lot of the shops here are thriving. Um, you know, restaurants are open and limited. They are open and open a couple of days a week. Other shops do the art gallery, which is sort of, to me, a sort of a central focus of this town, three days a week. So I'm not sure the thriving work would apply either. But primarily, is your exhibit A over there? I haven't heard you say anything that sounds like it would attract people to come and live in West Virginia because they don't want to pay an income tax. I talk to a lot of people, and what I hear that people want, they want to live here. What's missing from people who live here already, and therefore it might attract other people coming here, better schools, reliable Wi-Fi and cell phone, cell phone, it's 2021, and there are people who still don't have reliable cell phone every place. They want to know they got health care that's reliable. You don't have to drive through it. Uh, no, there's no public transit here. There's not a bus. There's not a train to get somewhere else besides your little location here. Those are the things that will make the people want to stay here. That's your first problem, is making people stay here. And never mind trying to get people to come live here. I haven't heard one thing that makes it sound attractive to people to move from New York or Ohio or anywhere else because there's no sales tax. I'm sorry, no income tax. Okay, well, let me, and, and I hear that, and I'm very respectful of you in every way, and I hope you be, and, and, but let me just say this. Just take just what you just said. You know, you said there's no dress shop downtown, you know. There's dress shops all over the state. I'm the governor of all over the state, for one thing. The next thing is he said, a lot of the shops are only open two days, and the, and the museum or whatever is only open three days. I would say to you, we've proven how to lose. We know we got losing down pat. What we got to do is figure out how to win. Now, I'm telling you that I've been your governor for four years, and in that four years, there's been tons and tons and tons of good stuff going on. Tons of good stuff. Now, I can't help, help what's happened forever before that, but forever before that, and even now, even now, we got big holes in the bucket and a lot to do. Now, we've had all kinds of people along the way that have tried to do better things for schools or better Wi-Fi or better, you know, better cell service or this or that. We've had that going on forever, and we have not won the games, and we haven't, you know. Now, I am telling you, I believe, I believe wholeheartedly that the people that are across state borders will come here if we have no income tax. It has happened everywhere, everywhere. What in the world, I mean, do you not realize in Tennessee, in Tennessee today, here's a perfect conversation. You go to the street, you walk up to a guy, and you say, sir, what's your name? He says, I'm Toby. Okay, well, Toby, let me ask you a question. When, when Tennessee went to having no income tax in Tennessee, did your taxes go up somewhere in some places? 
Yeah, buddy. Sure they did. Is that good or bad, Toby? What are you talking about, buddy? I was making $35,000 then, now I'm making eighty two. dollars And my house, I had on the market for a little while, while at $85,000, I just sold it for $127,000. And on top of that, buddy, do you realize when I was just, when I had young kids, I took them to Disney World every summer. Now, I can go right around the block and have all the entertainment that I want to have. Are you kidding me, buddy? And if I don't like my job, there's nine of them right around the block that I can go get. Well, that's what you're looking at. Yes, ma'am. My husband and I are in business for ourselves. We're in, we're in property management, right. uh, car sales and service, um, just a lot of things. We see people every day coming to this area. I We probably haven't seen an influx of people to this area like this since 9-11. Right. People leaving the city. They tell us outright, point blank, why they're going and why they're leaving. They're leaving for because of high taxes in other states. They're leaving because regulations in other states and rises scary you know, conditions sure. in cities and like that. So this area, we are seeing, and I, I dare say if you went around this room, a lot of the people here came here from someplace else to get out of what they were in. So I, I understand what you're saying. There's a lot more that needs to be understood and explained by everybody. But I do understand because we already see it here. People, uh, we, people from Baltimore, D.C., New Jersey. And New Jersey people never complain because they are so glad to be out of New Jersey. You know, it's things like that that, that uh, I experience every day as a very viable, functioning business person in this community. So I understand where you're going because if there's already kind of movement in that direction, maybe not in the rest of the state, and your plan or a plan like yours would be helpful to that. But believe me, we're seeing people come. So well. leaning more into it, I mean, you're, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, for us to think that people aren't looking at us now, people aren't coming here now, is silly, you know, and, and, and they are looking at us, and that's why now's the time to go. Because, I mean, Jamie and Chris, I mean, last night, I'm on Fox News, Brian Hillman, and, and they're just going on and on and on about this, or the Wall Street Journal, or wherever it may be. And they really get it. They truly, really get it now. And so in all of that, you know, again, there's just no way that I can see that we can, I mean, we can debate all the time. We can change and we can pivot. We can do a little tweaking here and there and everything. But the one thing in your business that, that we've done right off the get-go, if any of you have a sub-S or sole proprietorship or whatever like that, what we did there is we push them kind of the back of the line. And so you're not going to get a tax decrease immediately. That's not my doing. I want that more than anything because if you're, and let me be ridiculous to make my point. You've got somebody right over there in Maryland right now that has 100 employees and is making a lot of money. Literally, they they can bring their bid if they're a sole proprietor or LLC or sub S, we want them to come here. Now, and they can come here and bring their business right here and with all the profits flowing down to the owner, I mean, and, and let's say they're making enormous profits and they're flowing right to the owner and we get completely rid of our income tax, he pays no tax or she pays no tax. Well, is that going to recruit business or not? Well, of course it is. And you know what else is the whole trump card in the whole thing? Is every single one of them employees, when they come, are going to get a pay raise. All of them. And the owner's not going to have to pay for it. All of them are getting a pay raise. Now, this lady had her, and then I'm going to come right to you. Yes, ma'am. Good for you. And uh, so, Denise, it, your, your people, I don't like telling them that they were good wrestlers, they pointed their finger at me over $2,000 deep that I didn't get no unemployment. Well, I'm disabled from four weeks ago, nine months old, and I've been working all my life. 
Well, would you would you just do this for me, okay? I don't I don't I don't make any promises, but we'll try. You know, Rebecca or Daryl, if you'll get this lady's name, we'll get in touch and, and bless your courage and everything, and we'll we'll try. We'll try with all else. I promise. I'll promise you to my dying soul. We'll try. Yes, ma'am. Well, please just give them to one of my people. Will you please? Yes, ma'am. I love that. I love that right there because that we have we haven't really thought of it doing exactly that, but we should do that because I understand what my thinking is on the whole thing. If you do sixty percent right now, poof, do sixty percent, and West Virginia keeps going the way West Virginia is going right now, we'll let our growth take us the rest of the way, and we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to do another thing. Not one other thing. Honest and true, it will get us right there and it will finish it up. But if we don't do this, I mean, really, I hate to say it, but, you know, there's another proposal out there. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just let our growth take us there and let's just don't do anything. Well, it's not going to work. It's just plain not going to work. And it will take forever to get us there and nobody on the outside will believe you're really going to do it. You've got to put a stake in the sand that says we're doing this. Now, but absolutely, I love the fact that we'll put the stake in the sand, and I've said this all along, if we do this and we get out here a couple of years and we can't go any further, we don't go any further. That's just, we just, that's as far as we go. But it is an incredible reduction in, in everybody's taxes, and it will, it will, it will generate, it will stimulate the economy, it will go like crazy. And the other thing I tell you is just this. If you, I mean, there's just no, no way, and bless your heart, I, I, want, I want everybody to just, fat, just fixate on one thing. The federal government, whether it was Trump or whether it's Biden, and whether, whether they do whatever they're going to do, everything is called one word, stimulus. Because it works. It does stimulate. Now, in this situation, the stimulus dollars from COVID will go away, but this will be every year. Boom, boom. And then if we go higher than 60 and it goes, we go with growth and we get to 70, it's more. And then if we get to 100, it's not, it's not $1,400 in everybody's pocket. It's $2,400 in everybody's pocket. And then they spend and spend every year, every year. And then that doesn't count one person moving in. And then if the growth comes, here you go. Better and better and better. Yes, sir, you, yes. Um, there were two questions here about, sort of like, why don't I just take that money and drive across the state line and spend it there? Well, you can. No, you, wait, no, wait. There used to be uh, made, made in America ink on stuff you buy, and you'd be pleased to see sure. that. I love it. Okay. I love it. No, I love it. I mean, in my book, we've got to first and foremost be Americans, but secondly, we need to be West Virginians. And, and really and truly, we've been last forever. That's why I said to this lady, we've proven how to lose. I mean, we've got that down pat. We're good as we can be at that. And if we want to be in a, in a lifetime effort with Mississippi on who's going to be dead last, for God's sakes of living, you can do that, but you're not going to be doing it with me. 
Because everything you see on the news over and over, West Virginia first, first in construction, first in handle, how we've handled the CARES money, first in the pandemic, and first and first and first. What is that you think it's doing? It is making the world perk up and see you as the diamond in the rough that everybody missed. You know how people looked at us before? They looked at you as backward, absolutely the poorest, the roads terrible, everything. That's how people looked at it. That was not committed to education. That's why the first, out of the first get-go, at the first day of the state, I said, we have to make education our centerpiece. Why did I do that? I didn't do that because I just felt like it was just mysteri mysteriously the greatest thing in the world for education. I did it to help change our image, to show what we were trying to do. And that's what I've done. You're dead right, sir. Yes, sir. Well, let me tell you this, you, you know, here, and I know you got issues and I know you got problems, but Southern West Virginia is a train wreck, a complete train wreck. And, and it's a beautiful, beautiful area of the world. The mountains are unbelievable, the rivers and the waters, the streams and everything, they're fabulous, they really are. But absolutely, it's a train wreck. And, and the people, I mean, there is nowhere to turn because like it or not like it, but, you know, from our natural resources, I can't see that it's going to be better. We're going to be lucky to just kind of hang on, you know, and so we've got to diversify. We've got tourism really amped up. We've got high tech going and we've got absolute med going and all those good things. But, but, but the biggest thing that you heard me in the beginning say just this, you got a lot of people here right now. And really and truly, if it's not done tastefully, you know, people could come here, the, the people that you may not really want to be here. And not only that, you could create confusion and congestion and things like that that would not be your style of life. Your absolute standard of life. And so we have got to protect that too. Got to. No, no, I, I, I what you just said, people you may not want to be. Well, here's, here's what I'm saying. You know, if you turned in, let's just say you didn't want to be Northern Virginia with people on top of people, maybe trouble from the standpoint of high crime or whatever it may be. I mean, you surely to goodness don't want to be, you know, that's the beauty of West Virginians that I tell all the time. Low crime, faith-based, hard-working, people that know the difference between right and wrong. And if you get to where, you know, you could end up in a situation to where, you know, a lot of that lifestyle would change, I would think that's not what you'd want. Is that written into the budget, somehow to peel out the right kind of people? No, not less. I mean, I mean, really. I mean we, we can, we can, I mean, honestly, Here's the thing, and, and it's a crime shame. It's a crime shame when anybody goes to a church service and never hears the message. All they look for is just some little thing to just pick out and complain about. And that's all you're doing. Really, when it really boils right down to it, that's all you're doing. You're just complaining about nothing. You know, there, there's not such a thing in the world if you'll listen to the message as a bad person in my book. But I'm telling you, with all in me, you have an incredible community, and it's busy because you got a lot of people here. And if you don't watch out, you know it could turn into confusion and congestion and things like that that you may not want to have. Yes, sir. Yes.
seems to me that you're really for this, and you can stay with us, and you can pass off all of the uh, budgetary requirements onto the consumer, you know, the everyday person who's not saving $700,000 out of the uh, elimination of the income tax. By the way, that $1,400 number, is that annually? Is that monthly? Is that every annual. month? And, and under, it's only rather small when you look at it that way. The fourteen hundred dollars is a billion eighty-seven million dollars, and if that's small, I'm really out left field. And, and to answer your question, sir, I want you to, I, you know, here's the thing that uh, I know I might as well just go out and park the moon because you're not going to believe this no matter what. But uh, if you truly knew. If you truly knew my finances, what we've done, and how we've gone through every single piece of the way, I think you'd have a lot, lot different perspective. From the standpoint of the income tax on me, if you think for one second that Jim Justice is here to try to help himself, you're out of your mind. But, but you are. You're, you're going no way. To no possible way. No, no possible way. Because when you look at all of our companies and where they have been in the last 12 months, 36 months, 48 months, and you look, you'll see loss, 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 and loss. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Oh, very nice question. If I'm reading this correctly, you want to do the 60% on the wages, the pensions, and annuities, but Schedule C businesses, Schedule rentals, pass through you still want to keep the PIP tax on, correct? Temporarily. Okay, even in the short term. You, I, uh, that, well, that's going to hurt your Schedule C, your small businesses of West Virginia as a whole. Because they're going to get hit double with it. No, no. This is only on unearned income. And Dave, you can probably answer this but the practical a lot better than I. But do you want to answer this, Dave? But let me, let me just tell you just this. My belief is to allow some level of tax break immediately, but where I can't get to is I can't get to this big a delta right off the get-go for the small for, for the Schedule C's because if you put that in, that's another three hundred fifty million dollars, and that will that will cause a big hit to the. Now that that's just all that is is delay twelve to eighteen months, and then that'll kick right in. But Dave, please. That is a lot of your lifeblood in West Virginia. And then you also said about you want to bring in new people. Well, let's face it. It's mostly retirees that want to move here. But you're taxing all the income they, they usually collect. So if you're trying to make West Virginia enticing, why are you taxing, you know, their capital gains? That's what retirees... Do you First, most retirees, you're right, retirees do have other unearned income, but most retirees rely primarily on pensions, social security, annuities. They are all included in the tax cut. Mm -hmm. And when you look at West Virginia's income, household income, for most West Virginians, that's it. Current. Yeah, yeah. Then, now, the other part that you bring up, the plan is in the second part, this tax reduction plan is to take that level of income that you mentioned, the Schedule C and the Schedule E, which is right there on the outline. We wrote that outline. That, that's the second part of the plan. But the first part was to go to wages, salaries, pensions, annuities, Social Security, and unemployment because we felt like that was the, the need for most West Virginians and would affect most West Virginians the most. COVID going on everything else, the small businesses are the ones that are really, really hurting, which are the landlords, they are the small businesses, it's the small S Corp, the partnerships. If you're going to do something like this, not only are they going to pay tax on the stuff they bring in that's not tax exempt, now they have to raise their prices for that, then turn around and have an additional 1.9 on the sales tax, because they are getting a double whammy, plus now they have to pay their PIP tax 
on their profits. So technically, I guess it's a triple. Yeah. I mean, tell me your first name, please. Lisa. Lisa. Well, I'm just Jim. Okay. Nice to meet you. <laughs> it's good to meet you. Lisa, just think just about just one thing. What if we don't do anything? They're going to still have to pay, you know, in every way that they're paying. They're not, going, they're, they're not going to get out of paying, you know, their income tax. On the Schedule C's, they're not going to, you know, they're going to end up paying. I'm trying to do something that will eventually, in a very short period of time, get rid of that. Now, that's one thing. Second thing is, I think your argument, Lisa, is this. They're going to have to pay an additional 1.9% sales tax primarily, you know, and or their customers are going to have to pay 1.9% additional sales tax. My belief, and this is where we differ, my belief is if you put, and, and Daryl, how many, where are you there? How many households are there in Berkeley County? And I'm trying to do the math in my head, but... Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. I'm sorry, Morgan County. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, forget it. Okay. But, but in that county, if there's, if there's 7,000 households, we're going to put in this county, in the hands of all the people around here, about $11 million, 11 or $12 million. It's going to be everywhere out there. Now... Do you not think that all these businesses, every place here, is going to absolutely do more business if there's $11 million? Do you know what we would do in West Virginia to get one, one, no seriously, to get one business to come and invest a million dollars in West Virginia? We'd give them everything. That's what we do all the time. I'm not saying I disagree with your plan by any means. You said to tweak it. I'm no, tweaking. I'm not uh, arguing. Well, here's the I would I go back to this, Lisa. If I as this makes its way from the House to the Senate, then at that point in time, and I'll tell you this with all in me, we should cut down the amount of increase on beer, wine, and liquor. You know, from the standpoint of this vaping thing, which I don't know anything at all about, we probably ought to squeeze that down a little bit. And from the standpoint of, of, of the, the thing that is dear, dearest to my heart is what you're talking about. Because just like I said a minute ago, I want to attract people to bring their businesses here. And they'll bring their businesses here if we have a lesser or an elimination of the Schedule C and all the sub S's and all that. That's the very thing that brings businesses here, you know. Now, as far as our businesses that are already here, the money, the money that's going in the pockets of the people will drive the businesses that are here. Actually, for new businesses coming into West Virginia, there is a West Virginia, West Virginia Opportunity Zone. So new businesses coming in, Schedule C's excluded, um, they already get a personal income tax break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, has be, it has to be an opportunity. Yes, it has to be an opportunity. If you're in an opportunity zone. West Virginia is yeah. an opportunity zone. Right. But you said that exempts Schedule C? No, it does not. Okay. It's only, you want to answer, my understanding answer this? Is well, it's it, only it, would, it, it would exempt uh, capital gains and, and, and income. So if, if, a, if a new business is a, is a Schedule C business, they would get the same benefits. Actually, everything we've read and looked into, it has to be a partnership or above. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know more because we well, let me check. Yeah, you know, this guy is the head of all tax in West Virginia, yeah, so, so he ought to know. Yeah, that, that's mainly designed for capital gain relief, uh, but I think West Virginia has a few provisions they it, added in on top of the federal provisions. But back to, again, enticing new businesses into West Virginia, that's kind of already been covered with the opportunities that are in the opportunities zone areas. Okay, all right, let, let me just ask one question. Did they come? Did what come? Did they come, the new businesses? It has not been widely marketed because I, it doesn't really matter. Did they come? You know, the answer is just the same about roads to prosperity, right to work, everything, prevailing wage, everything, everything. 
You know, we got to get them to come. This fellow, and then maybe you, and then we'll get, I, well, I'm going to go three questions. Good, but I'm going to go real, wait, four questions. I'll go with each. If you'll go quick. Yes, sir. Or man. Sorry. Um, I did this mask. I can't, I'm sorry. I knew the business here from Maryland, and it was a nonprofit, and I ended up getting killed on property tax here for inventory that I had. So I just want to point that out because that's also a problem with this that we don't live here. Uh, it's property tax, and also when you move here, um, you know, you might pay income tax, which you sort of expect, but I didn't expect to pay property tax and personal stuff for the cars and things like that. So Yeah, I've got I've got this secretary of revenue, I've got this right hand man here and everything. There's nothing to that. There's absolutely nothing to that. Everything has to balance. Everything will be balanced. There's nothing to that. That's just a that's just fake news fallacy and everything. But I promise you at the end of the day, when this whole thing comes rolling out and everything, it'll balance, it'll balance, and it'll balance. You know. Yes, ma'am. I, I appreciate your enthusiasm for all this, but I look at it and I think, okay, so how are we going to entice people to come to West Virginia because there's no say, um, pro, uh, what do you call it, income tax, when we are consistently and historically at the bottom of the barrel in healthcare, education, infrastructure, jobs? I don't see how that can possibly work. It, it, it almost seems like wishful thinking to me. Okay, eliminate the income tax, and then all of a sudden, hordes of people are going to come here. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense. Well, okay. And, I, and I'm, it's not, I'm not no, trying no. to be a naysayer. No, no, I'm I, just I, looking I at it and thinking, I know, but this just, doesn't work. Just let me just say this. On day one, when I walked in, they shoved me the books. And the book said, in the current year you're in, you're going to lose $219 million. Now, remember, I come in in January. We're halfway through the year because our year ends in June. You're going to lose $219 million. What are you going to do? What are you going to cut? Cut, 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 cut. Then, in the first year you're here, this man right here handed me the books. We're going to be $497 more million in the home. Cut, 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 cut. More and more and more people leave. Okay? The next year, you're going to be 600 or something, and then it goes to $772 million, and it's all adding on top of one another. Now, that's what they handed me. I said, well, do you have a rainy day fund? Oh, yeah. But you can't take any money out of rainy day because in the last few years, we've taken $300 million out of rainy day, and our bonds are getting ready to be derailed. Now, you need somebody that has wishful thinking. And truly and truly, that's where I am. I really, truly believe with all in me that this will bring job opportunities. It will help our schools like crazy. It will make us be able to do more road work. All of those things. But if you don't do that, know where you're at. My God, of living, just go outside and look around and say, baby, right here's where we're going to be. We're going to be dead last, dead last forever. Well, but I look at other states, like even states, Alaska doesn't have an income tax. They're right, right down there with us in a lot of areas. If you, I, and listen, and sure. then you look at Maryland and Pennsylvania and Virginia, they all have income tax, but they're all above us in all those critical areas. I mean, it, I'm just saying, to me, it doesn't add up. Well, we're a little, uh, we're a, a, a little behind in the race, there's no question, but we don't want to be Alaska. My God, who wants to go to Alaska and live in Alaska? No, but I'm just saying, they don't have an income tax either, but they're right down there I, with us. I got you there. But, but, but look, look, I mean, 
Virginia has been Virginia, and West Virginia has been West Virginia, and Pennsylvania has been Pennsylvania, and Maryland, Maryland. How long, how long is it going to take for you to get tired of being last? How long is it going to take? Now, we've done, you can't deny this, we have done amazing things in the last four years in West Virginia. Amazing things. But how long are we going to just sit around and want to be dead last? Because not, not being egotistical in any way, but there'll be a point in time Jim Justice won't be your governor. And there'll be a point in time right behind all that that you, if you don't do anything, you're going to awaken to just this. You're going to go right back in the same rut, the same rut, the same rut. You got to do something. We've proven it. We've proven it for seven decades. Seven decades right there, you've lost population. Right. Got to do something. But I don't know that this is the something we need. Well, you may not. <laughs> you, may, you may think it's something else. It may very well be something else. Yes, sir. Thanks, Bob. Um, I understand following your answer. Before we get what you're trying to say, anybody in this room understands our business? We follow, we follow the agreement with our business very good versus the train. Versus the train for me,
compared to adjacent states, would be enough to pay for the new equipment of a production site within five years elsewhere. We don't want to do that. Okay, let, let me ask. We don't want to kill ourselves to get here and get to the point where we are now. That production barrel increase, production of per barrel increase, would kill us. Would kill any production that we have in the future. Okay. Okay, let, let me let me give it the best I got here. I said a few minutes ago that I really believe that we're out of kilter in the dollars of increase on beer, wine, and liquor. I said that a few minutes ago. I absolutely want you to know that with all in me, I'm trying to do everything I possibly can for all small businesses, every last one. I really honestly believe that even at where we're at right now, I can't imagine with the money component of what's going on that people won't buy more beer from you tomorrow if we do every bit of this than they will today. But I truly believe and hear you in that we've got that out of kilter. You know, I got that. I, and I want you to succeed more than you could ever, ever know. But I also want you to know just this. Don't end up like the guy, Mike, in Beckley that was believing that his costs are going to go from 7 to $10. Really and truly, you're talking about on a can of beer, the cost would go up 10 cents a can. I honestly believe that with the dollars that are here, even today, with what it is, and I'm telling you, it's out of kilter, and we're going to do something about it, okay? But I am telling you, even if we didn't, I can't imagine that you wouldn't sell more beer, you wouldn't have more tourism, you wouldn't have more of all those things if we went forward and if we didn't, and we didn't do anything. But I hear you. And absolutely, I'll promise you that we will adjust because it's out of kilter, period. That's all there is to it. All right, I got to go unless there's somebody that's you know, going to roadblock me and throw a tackle on me or whatever. <laughs> but they're all screaming at me that I got to go and everything. And I, let, me, let me say the last, last, my last. All of you, and I mean it, you gave up your time. You gave up your time to come. I truly in my heart believe that this is the most transform transformative moment that this state could ever, ever, ever have in front of it. But, irregardless of that, all of us have opinions and all of us make West Virginia go. We've stayed together through the pandemic and that's really what saved us. We've all pulled the rope together. We've done things for all the bordering states all around us are having people die like flies, and we've made it. It's been dog tough. It's all there is to it on every last one of us. I appreciate you and love you more than you'll ever know. And there's nothing that I want to do any, in any way other than make things better. I'm trying with all in me. Absolutely, I want you to just open your minds and be sure, because if we miss, in my opinion, this is like the watermelon coming, and you standing there with the tennis racket, and you just shoosh, and you just miss it. In this one, there's not going to be many chances. Right now is our time in my book. I'm not going to sell it anymore to you. I love you with all my soul, and we're just going to keep on trying in every way to do, to do good stuff for all of us. Thank you a bunch. Appreciate you.